Hi, welcome to edgeofcode.com series of infinite roller tutorials. If you prefer a written tutorial, you can find one on the website edgeofcode.com and I'll put a link below. Uh, so in the previous tutorial, I showed you the game that we're going to make and introduced Unity. This time I'll show you how to create images in Inkscape, how to import them into Unity and then how to add physics to the objects. Uh, if you don't already have it, go to inkscape.org to download it, it's completely free. Um, so Inkscape is a vector graphics editor, which means that what you draw is described mathematically rather than in terms of pixels, which allows you to zoom in as much as you want to and retain resolution. Um, so one of the reasons I use Inkscape to draw images for games rather than a raster editor like GIMP, which uses pixels, is that if I create an image of a character um, and then later I decide that actually I need a much larger version of the character, a much higher resolution, um, I don't have to then either use a low version, low resolution version of the image that's just blown up or um, alternatively create a whole new image. I can instead go back to Inkscape and export what I've drawn at a higher resolution. Um, I also like Inkscape because I find it's easier to manipulate images. Okay, so um, actually, I'll put this up so you can see what I press in case um, there's something that I miss saying. Okay, so first I'm going to draw the character. Click on the circle and. <laughs> interesting. So. Mine is obviously white on white, so let me just change that. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, I'm going to delete that and try again. So click on the circle. Um, to make it an actual circle, press Control, um, and that will make it either into a specific sort of ellipse or a circle. And let go. Um, next, uh, so to get this up, I went to object and fill and stroke with the object selected. Uh, to fill, uh, I'm going to make it a sort of bluey green colour, maybe that one. Uh, a bit brighter. And I'm also going to draw a line around the outside. So that width's probably about right, and I want it black. You don't have to put an outline around it. I've just decided that I fancy it. Um, now I'm going to change it into a path. So path and then object to path. And this will make it easy to manipulate with these things here. Um, so select the object, click on the second button down, edit path by nodes, um, and then drag over it and click this plus button, and that will add an extra node in between each of the existing ones. So I'm just going to change these slightly to make the character a bit wobbly, I suppose. Um, I'd encourage you to kind of play around with these and to see what they do bit more. Um, I'm not going to do it too much because I still want this to look like it will roll around. But uh, that looks right. Um, okay, next I'm going to draw the eyes. About maybe that big. Uh, I'm going to make the fill colour white and then draw a smaller one for a pupil and make that one black. And then I'm dragging over both of them to select both bits of the eye and then copy and paste. I'm just going to move the eye, the pupil, sorry, in that one and then drag over it and then drag to move. Okay, and now I'm going to make a mouth. Again, starting with the circle, uh, maybe that big. 
I'm going to change it to a path because I want to manipulate it. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, maybe something like that. To make it look unhappy about rolling around. Um, you could also add some other things like eyebrows or, well, anything you want really. Um, but that's good for now, I think. Um, I'm also going to make a piece of ground, so I'm going to use a rectangle or a square for that. Um, to make it a perfect square, I'm going to use control again while I drag the mouse. There we go. And make it green. That'll do. Um, also, I'm going to remove the out, like the black outline for this by going to the stroke and clicking the cross. And that's because these are going to be tiled next to each other. And I don't want the black line um, between each. Of course, you might want the black line, but I don't for this time. Um, this one can stay as an object because I don't want to manipulate its shape. But I am going to split it in two so that the top can be look like grass and the bottom can look like earth. So to do that I'm going to use this draw freehand lines tool. Um, sorry. Oh. Uh, make sure that this create spiral path is selected and change smooth to about 26, something like that. Um, and then I'm just going to draw something like that over it. Uh, I'll increase the stroke a bit. Okay, now I want to rotate it a bit so that, ooh, rotate it. <laughs> there we go. Um, by, so that this bit and this bit roughly match up so that when they're tiled, it kind of looks roughly at least like, like it should. Uh, so that's about right. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, so now I'm going to fill in this bottom bit with a nice brown colour. Um, okay, so if I fill it now and then zoom in, you can see that there's a green, well, hopefully you can see, there's this green border around the edge. Um, there are two ways you can fix that. Um, one is when you fill, you have this grow shrink by. If you increase that, you should it should it grows what it thinks that you're trying to fill in by some amount. So, um, if this is zero, I fill this in. You can see even now there's a gap here as well. Uh, If if I grow it, then that gap will be less. Um, but another way to do it, or as well, is to zoom in as much as you can, but still keeping the whole of the area you want to fill in in view. Uh, sorry, this is because if I zoom in too much, oops, and then try to fill, it won't work. Um, so zoom out just enough and then fill in and then you can you'll be able to see there is no longer actually there is a little bit <laughs> so I'm gonna grow it a bit more and try again That's better. So now there's no green line anymore. Okay, so now I'm gonna delete this line so we don't need it anymore. Um, you could also add like uh, detailed bits of grass to this or something to the earth. Um, I'm gonna add a couple of stones actually to make this a bit more interesting. So just a circle tool 
and change it to move pass. And then, let's see. That'll do. And I'll change its color and drag it over. And one more. And pick a different color. Okay, there we go. I think that'll do. Okay, so now I'm going to save this file. So go to File and Save. This will save an Inkscape SVG file. Um, I'll just make a roller folder. Um, so this is roller ink. And now I'm going to export each of these. So to do that, make sure this one's selected. And drag over the whole image. If you only drag over half of it, you won't select all of the parts. So make sure everything is selected. Um, and then export PNG image. And you'll get a pop-up over here. So make sure selection is um, selected. And now you can pick what the image size you want to export is. Um, I'm going to do 512, and it will set the height that it thinks it should be automatically. And then I'm just going to export it to uh, 'save there doesn't save the character file it saves the location so once you've chosen the location that you're saving it as you also have to press export to actually save a PNG file okay I'm gonna do the same for the piece of ground um, ground and export So now these are saved on my desktop. I'm going to import them into Unity, into the sprites folder that we created last time. Okay, um, I'll just select both of them and drag them over here and drop. And now you've already imported the characters. So Unity usually tries to guess what you're trying to import it as. Um, this is what we want, so we can leave it like that. But we know that we exported it at a size of 512, so there's no point in Unity thinking that it's a 2048 file. So change it to 512 and click Apply for both of these. Um, now we can make them into game objects by just clicking and dragging into the scene view. Uh, okay, so that's a bit big. So I'm going to go and click on ground again and change this pixels per unit to 200 to make it twice as small. There we go. Um, and do the same character. Just drag that in. Again, that's too big. So I'm going to change this. That's better. Okay, um, so I'm just going to show you how to do things in the scene view. So if I press the middle mouse button, I can move around the scene like that. Um, if I scroll the middle mouse button, then I zoom in and out. Um, I can also move the scene by clicking this button instead and then using the left mouse button. Um, this one lets me move a game object. And uh, this one lets me rotate it, which I don't want to do. Um, this one lets me scale it. And this one will let me move the image itself like that. Um, okay, so if I press play right now, nothing will happen. 
because all that this is is two images so we want to add some physics to it now to let it actually do something um, so to the character I'm going to go to add component physics 2d and rigid body 2d this tells unity that I want it to control the physics of the character so when I press play now it will act as if there's gravity um, so that's sort of what we want but we also want it to land on the piece of ground so I'm going to add colliders to both the character and the ground so go to add components again physics 2d and for the character I want to add a circle collider now, unity is quite clever it will fit the collider to the image and that looks about right to me and then go to ground and this time we're going to add a box collider um, so now if I press play it will fall and land obviously it's not a very exciting game yet but um, that's a good start okay so we're going to save it now um, and this time instead of just saving the project we also want to save the scene um, so this is a scene but a project can have multiple scenes so like each level of your game could be a different scene so that's why you have two separate save options and you usually want to use both uh, I was going to create a new folder here called scenes and then file same scene and I'm going to call it um, roller line and save it so next time when you want to reload this specific scene you can click on that and it will load these objects these game objects in these positions and save project okay so uh, I think that's the end of this tutorial um, so yeah for this tutorial we've looked at drawing some simple artwork in Inkscape importing it to Unity and then adding some simple physics in the next tutorial I will talk about prefabs and we'll start programming um, so we'll code some initial terrain generation um, remember you can download the files for this tutorial on the downloads page of the website here and I'll see you next time.